I hear now is the intake manifold. This is the new oval port B Block Chevrolet manifold from Professional Products. Looks like a part number 53036 or 53037 is what it's got up underneath. And what a tremendous amount of work this is, guys. I pictures and film don't do this SB justice. Uh, I guess they made it, I shouldn't kick on it, they made this to fit a variety of ovals. Of course, using the big Mr. Gasket, look at the amount of meat that's got to come out of here. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have my camera here to film the plenum, and that just killed me. My camera had to go in the shop, I had to clean it, and all that, but I wouldn't go no further until I got this. Um, Mr. West bought this manifold, the owner... Uh, which he's a Black Hawk uh, pilot, flies them badass helicopters up at 104 Airborne. And uh, I had talked to him. He had a dual plane manifold, and I said, Look, dude, if I'm going to raise the roof and carve this on the head, I got to have a manifold that will feed it economically. You know, the best that you can do. And this manifold, while, yeah, it is economical, I believe he said he paid two and a quarter, something like that for it. What he didn't know and what I didn't know at the time, Summit sells a version of this intake manifold that is the exact same thing. They're buying it from the same foundry, but it don't have the professional product's name, and they're like $150. So any of you big block Chevrolet oval port guys want this manifold, make sure you get the Summit brand. It's a considerable amount cheaper, and there is no difference in them. Now, uh, like I said, a ton of meat has to come out. Looks like it core shifted pretty bad toward the roof of the port. Uh, the meaning that all the meat has to come out of the bottom. Um, I wish it would have been more on top. I'm a raised roof guy, but it is what it is. When I plant the shape and everything, it don't matter anyway, but the point is, uh, in order to make this come out to the manifold, it's going to have to go up almost two and a half to three inches in that i got to carve this whole thing out to make it blend. Let me give you some shots from another angle. Right here, uh, near the, I guess this would be the back two port distributor hole, this would be six and eight. Look at the dramatic turn how they're doing that. I will probably take a quarter inch starting from here, pull that whole thing in the same way right here, and at least a quarter on the bottom. So I got a quarter going this way, the shift, and then a quarter going down. Roof's pretty much lined up. Uh, this is going to make just a tremendous difference. You wouldn't believe it. Now, in order to do this... I've switched to my favorite butcher hog of the aluminum world. This is a 9 16 or 5 8 egg, and this thing uh, kicks ass like nobody's business. I've already trenched it with this. It's one of the few times that I'll trench and create the garden rows and do raw material removal to a point where I start switching to the smaller ones. So this is going to be the work of the day. I'm going to show you in steps as I cut, but the trench in the clover leaf has already formed. Hardly any clover leaf here, because like I said, it lined up. But I'm going to go ahead and start bringing her down, and then we're going to compare uh, the final product. I mean, just look how much meat, good God, has to come out of this thing. I've already got seven hours in the plenum area, because professional products, I'm sorry guys, your casting process is really horrendous. I had to chop the runner baits, the plant them. It was just atrocious. But what do you expect for $200? Yeah, you can buy a $400 manifold from Dart or somebody else. But guess what? Yeah, it's a little bit better, but you still got to go in there and port it just like what I'm doing. So at the end of the day, the decision you have to make is, do I buy the Dart manifold that the casting is a little bit better, but you still have to go in there and spend time on it. Why not buy the cheap one and go in there? And yeah, it is a little more work, but the overall price is down. Now, John being one of our dear uh, military men serving the country, I try to help them guys, like I told you, as much as I can, when I can. 
Uh, typically, on a port of this magnitude, I charge 200 to 250 bucks. I try to stay right around 225 to be honest, when I have to do all this plenum work and runner work. But let's say you buy the $150 manifold and put 225 in head bites pocket, okay? I'm going to give you a manifold that will kick the hell fire out of the dart intake or any of the other big ovals from Elder Brock or whoever, even if they're ported. So you're getting by far better product because they're, they're upwards of 350 380 for a dart intake. We're going to be right at 400, but you can't compare one that I have went in there and done all this work to, plant them and, and everything compared to a stock manifold. So winner, dollar per dollar, hands down. You're going to spend 400 one way or another. Why not spend 400 and have one fully whapped, mathematically shaped to feed your motor? China, y'all won this round on this one. All right, anyway, let's get on to the butchery and skullduggery here of this little item and uh, manipulate its design and try to make this thing work. We can get back on the heads. Porting's almost all done on the heads except for the final blending after the valve job. And good news, guys, according to John West, the owner of the stuff, the motor, the car is ready to go. Uh, within just a few days, he'll have it running, and he's he's told me that he's going to let me come up there with my camera. You get to see the carts going in, you get to see how it runs, and you get to hear his opinion on the work that Headbot's done, uh, which, you know, hopefully he gives me a good reference there, but hey, you know what? To hear it straight from the horse's mouth, it is what it is. Anyway, back to you, and all right, right now... As you can see, this one here has got its cross-section cut back. What I typically do when I'm trying to match it is come around and watch the divide as it tilts and goes sideways. With this one here, you can tell the chunk of meat. It has to go almost all the way to there before she can straighten out. That's about an inch and a half to two inches. I try to leave about 50 thousandths to the inside on this to allow for manifold movement. I don't go all the way through because trying to leave a, a, a rectangle in a rectangle or a circle in a circle, that's what you want to do and that's pretty much why I set it up like that. All right.